Somebody say power after Holy Ghost. Power after Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost ain't power. Holy Ghost is a person. But after person, Holy Ghost comes. His power shows up. <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody say he is not an it. The Holy Ghost is a he. In John 16, Jesus made reference 13 times. And he called him either he, him, or himself. He never referred to the Holy Ghost as a feeling, a force, a little mystical floating cloud somewhere, a little feeling of it. Glory to God. Somebody shout, he's not an it. He's alive. He's a he. He's real. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Ghost, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. You can't grieve a feeling, but you can grieve a person. God said in his word in Isaiah 63 in verses 10 the Bible said they rebelled against God and vexed his Holy Spirit. You can't vex an emotion but you can vex or grieve a person. In Acts chapter 5 in Ananias and Sapphire the Bible said in verse 4 they lied to the Holy Ghost and it cost them their life. You can't lie to a thing but you can lie to a person. And in verses 5 of Acts 5 amen and Peter went on and said, you lied to God. Therefore, Holy Ghost is God. He's God, the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. The Bible said in God's Word in 2 Corinthians 13 and verses 14, let the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship, the communion, the friendship of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Amen. Somebody said that the communion Wherefore today, if you hear the voice of the Holy Ghost, Hebrews 3, 7. Somebody say the voice of the Holy Ghost. The thing don't have a voice. The person does. Yes. Acts 10 and 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power that it went about doing all manner of good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Somebody say God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. A lot of people want his power, but they don't want him. Hello? They don't want Holy Ghost. They just want Holy Ghost power. Give me your power. Let me live any old way I want to. But, but the angel told Mary, when Holy Ghost overshadows you, when his shade comes, and I say, made in the shade. When Holy Ghost shows up with his shade, when he comes with his shadow, he overshadows you, and his power touches you. The first thing he's going to do is birth a holy thing in you. Somebody shout, Holy Ghost, still holy. Praise God. When Holy Ghost comes. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He'll change your life. The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verses 6 about King Saul. So the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Hallelujah. And he prophesied with them and was turned into another man. Somebody shout when Holy Ghost came, he was changed. He was not the same. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's why the old saints in the old church called it being slain in the Spirit. Because they didn't just call it this casual falling out. Amen. When catchers, amen. Come on. We had to get together the blanket throwing committee. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's right. Come on. Bless you, dog. Yes. Does God help us? Amen. Oh, here comes a sister. She's got her dress on. It's biblical. It's lo and behold to her. Yes, right. Somebody get that in the morning. Right. Lo and behold. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, brother Mike. Thank you, Jesus. Stand up. Hallelujah. It's my understanding. Don't know which one. Maybe both. Praise God. Amen. But listen to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost comes, somebody shout, He'll sanctify you. First Peter 1 2 because of the sanctification of the Spirit. The old saints called it being slain in the Spirit because if you went down a drunk, you got up sober. Oh, if you went down an adultery, sir, you got up. Amen. Come on, somebody. You get your house in order. Come on, somebody. If you went down a fornicator, you got up and went to either the judge or the and said, I do, or you left. Right, right. That's the truth. <laughs> right. Come on, anybody to breathe. Yeah. Man, old school church, huh? when folk got in the Holy Ghost, huh? look at your neighbor, say that's that kind of revival we in right here. Oh, when Holy Ghost comes, huh? he bursts holiness, huh? holy things. I ain't just talking about clothesline religion, but God help us, we do need some clotheslines put back up. Come on, that's the truth. Right. So low here, it's a high there, and we don't know which ends up or down anymore. Bless you, God. God. That's yeah. Don't stop breathing. Praise God, somebody. Get your breath. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost? 
Amen. I'm, I'm not against all that kind of, amen, uh, stuff as far as folks that don't know. I'm talking about folks that have been around church long enough to know. Don't want anybody breathing. I mean, common sense tells you if a, if a silkworm could have made more material on his lot to break than what you wear, maybe it might, might be a time to. <laughs> Proverbs 31 verse 17 said a virtuous woman covereth her lungs. Look at your neighbor and say, we, the only cheeks we need to see is these on your face. Anybody breathe? You know, when you come to the altar, hallelujah, it's, it's the throngs on, not the thongs on. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Victoria ain't got no... You should have some. Anybody breathe? Breathe. Praise God. Somebody's already getting mad with me now. It's too late. You don't mean God. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It don't matter. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach anyhow. I'm going to sleep good tonight. But, but listen to the Holy Ghost. He birthed somebody to say a holy thing in her. And ain't it amazing when the Holy Ghost got ready to search and look for somebody he could use? Somebody shouted, found a teenage girl who was sexually pure. My God, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? God said, my eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth that I might show myself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are completely devoted or perfected toward me. First Chronicles 16 and 9. God's looking for somebody. God said, I want to use somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he looked through the earth and he found a teenage girl. Amen. Glory to God that was still a virgin. And he said, you've kept yourself pure. I'm going to use you. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb. Even if you have sexually sinned, there's forgiveness at the cross. And I wouldn't preach it any other way. But I've come to tell somebody that had them those in that sin, you can cover it up with a condom, but it's still a sin. Keep yourself pure. And then protect your body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Because God's got a plan for you. Don't jeopardize it for a few minutes. Fuck. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible tells us, it's about to say the Bible, the Bible. tells us at the top of God's hate list of those that will not inherit the kingdom of heaven is fornication. Someone say fornication. That means sexual sin. That means you have sex and you're not married. 